Space is a mystery that captivates millions of people. Infinite vastness, beauty, and fantastic phenomena are waiting for all those who, like scientists and amateur astronomers, deal with the mystery of the universe. Today, we approach three mysterious, strange, and quite real events, as well as clarify the questions where thousands of mysterious signals come from, what the first World Space Scout will look like, and which is the fluffiest planet in the cosmos. Stay tuned, because it will be exciting until the very last minute. The Clear Space One Space Mission there's a joke going around among astronomers about how you can recognize humanity in space. Clearly, by the garbage. We humans do not only let our own planet suffocate in garbage, but carry this problem also increasingly into the universe. Our planet is not only covered by thousands of satellites, but also by thousands of pieces of debris, plastic scraps, remains of rocket tanks, and much more. If you look at Mars, you will see that although no human being has ever set foot on the planet, we have nevertheless already left our garbage behind. Old NASA rovers, a crashed ESA probe, remnants of orbiter solar sails, and most recently, scientists around the currently active Mars rover Perseverance stumbled across a strange-looking piece in the Martian dust, only discover that it was, yeah, you guessed it, garbage from the rover. If humans get to Mars, they will not only build futuristic dwellings, grow plants, and explore the planet, but also produce lots of trash. Most likely, all the trash would be left behind if humans decide to leave Mars again one day. Garbage retrieval is not in the plans of NASA or even SpaceX. It's funny and tragic at the same time, but the first humans to fly back to the moon in 50 years are tasked with, among other things, collecting some of the trash from the Apollo missions there and returning it to Earth. The cosmic trash problem on the Moon and Mars is still manageable. But the junk in Earth's atmosphere poses a threat not only to current satellites, but also to the ISS and future space missions. In 2021, a SpaceX Dragon space capsule had a near miss with an identifiable object that was later classified as space debris. The International Space Station, or ISS, regularly has to correct its course because its radar reports a piece of space debris in its flight path. The European Space Agency, or ESA, was the first to respond to the problem, creating the Space Surveillance and Tracking System. The goal is to monitor and track space debris through the use of radar systems and optical telescopes. The United States Space Surveillance Network program also tracks satellites and space debris and even created a map of the debris to make future space travel safer. In 2025, ESA hopes to send a robot into space to retrieve a known and very large piece of space debris. The four-armed robot was designed by a Swiss initiative called ClearSpace. The mission's target is a secondary payload adapter from ESA's Vega rocket that was left in space in 2013. Since then, the 220-pound part has been floating about 497 miles above the Earth. Currently, the plans for the Clear Space One mission still call for the robot and adapter to burn up as they enter the Earth's atmosphere. But this has already drawn initial criticism from scientists who believe that it is irresponsible to simply let millions burn up like this. The latest ideas envisage a robot capable of collecting garbage on a large scale in the cosmos and returning it to Earth. Space debris consists mostly of metals such as aluminum, stainless steel, titanium, and copper that can potentially be reused or recycled. Some pieces contain rare engineering equipment that can be reused or at least have museum value. Certainly collectors worldwide would pay prices in the hundreds of thousands or even millions of euros for such pieces. Whoever will secure the market of space cleaning can make a million dollar business out of it. Contact attempts from space? Fast radio flashes are a mystery of astrophysics, which could still offer us some surprises in the future. In purely physical terms, it is a fleeting signal that comes to us from the depths of the cosmos. The signals normally sound for fractions of a millisecond to several milliseconds, rarely lasting longer, and then falling silent. 
The signals are received by gigantic radio telescopes, such as the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia or the 500-meter Spherical Aperture Telescope in China. To human ears, the signals would not be audible. Special computer programs filter millions of acoustic data received from all corners of space every day. Most of the time, the sounds are a unified noise from terrestrial radio sources, signals from satellites, electromagnetic waves from the sun, or from other events in the cosmos. Only computer-aided algorithms are able to filter out the finest deviations from the standard noise patterns, isolate them, and shift them into the audible range by modifying the frequencies and pitches. Normally, these flashes sound only once briefly and then are gone forever. Supernovae, quasars, or also radiation-intensive events around black holes are considered as sources. That a flash would rhythmically appear again and again for weeks at a time is a rarity. A 2019 dataset revealed just such a series of radio flashes that could be traced to a single source. The sound, which became known as FRB 121-102, sounds like this. The rapid radio flash was heard over a period of 47 days. Within that time, the flash sounded again and again at regular intervals. And it was this fact that made the signal unique and a mystery that remains unsolved to this day. The scientists of the SETI project took up the signal and evaluated it without further ado as a possible technosignature, which means that the source could be an unknown technology from an unknown world. Of course, this would also mean that the signals are generated by an alien civilization. The fact that the signals are audible to us could be a coincidence or an attempt at contact. If the signals resemble radio messages, however, they would be on a wavelength that would normally be very difficult or impossible for us to hear. The rhythmic repetition could be a kind of Morse code. We know rhythmic signal repetitions from satellites, probes, radio stations, and many other technical devices, which communicate over long distances and send out signals. At the peak of its activity, the FRB source was sending out rapid radio bursts at a rate of 122 bursts per hour. Then, nothing was heard for two days, and subsequently, the signals increased again. What cosmic event that could be explained naturally could be behind this? The scientists did not find an answer to this question. Some of them considered FRB 121-102 as the first alien signal, while other branches of astrophysics did not want to accept this explanation and started to search for other possible explanations. Finally, the authenticity of the signal source was examined and investigated so long until the conservative science came to the conclusion that FRB 121-102 was not extraterrestrial but originated from a disturbance source on Earth. But that did not solve the mystery. Astronomers at the University of Queensland recently tracked radio signals sent to us from 19 red dwarf stars outside our solar system. Four of these stars are orbited by exoplanets, and rhythmic signals also emanate from these stellar systems, repeating periodically and then fading away. Advanced technologies such as FAST and the much more powerful low-frequency array telescope in the Netherlands are expected to further analyze these phenomena, and we may yet find an explanation for FRB 121-102. We don't really believe in the theory of a terrestrial source of interference. After the video, you tell us what you think. Kelt 11b Which is the fluffiest planet in space? Well, it's Kelt 11b, of course. Have you never heard of this exoplanet? Well, then it's about time. Besides horror worlds, super-Earths, and mysterious exoplanets, our universe also holds all kinds of curiosities, and Kelt 11b is definitely one such oddity. Discovered in 2016, the exoplanet orbits the subgiant star Kelt 11 and was the first exoplanet discovered in this system to be named Kelt 11b. Kelt 11b's composition and density is more reminiscent of cotton candy than a planet. This fluffiness is most likely due to the fact that Kelt 11b orbits its star so closely that its matter is loosened by the star's gravity. 
Dr. Pepper, an astronomer at Lehigh University, compared the density of this planet to styrofoam. The planet is huge compared to other planets in our system. With a radius 1.37 times that of Jupiter, the cosmic cotton candy would clearly tower over all other planets in our system, though it would never match their density. In our system, Saturn is the fluffiest of them all. Placed in a pool, Saturn would float on the surface of the water and Kelt 11b would probably hover above the surface. Thanks to the star's proximity and brightness, astronomers were able to gather many details about Kelt 11b. So far, we can observe exoplanets only indirectly. Since they do not emit light themselves, we have to rely on analyzing the scattering of starlight in their environment. The planets themselves can usually only be detected when they pass in front of their stars as tiny dots. A giant like Kelt 11b is easy to spot. Little planets like our Mercury, on the other hand, can currently escape even the best telescopes if they are far away. We have only had the ability to detect and study exoplanets at all since 1992. Since then, our knowledge of the universe has been enormously enriched and cosmological wonder has entered a new phase. It's almost unbelievable how many planets exist in our cosmos. And so far, we have studied a little more than 5,000 of probably trillions of exoplanets. Some bear similarities to the worlds we know of. There are the Jupiter-like planets. Others have rings like Saturn. Then there are planets that resemble Earth. And yet, all exoplanets are unique in their compositions, orbits, and surface textures. With the launch of the new James Webb Space Telescope, the observation of exoplanets will also enter a whole new era. The spectrometers on board the telescope are capable of scanning the environment of even distant exoplanets. The wavelengths of the scattered light will tell researchers exactly whether an exoplanet has an atmosphere and whether water vapor or other biosignatures such as CO2, oxygen, or carbon compounds are present. Who knows, we may finally find our Earth's cosmic twin, or several. What do you think about these discoveries? Are you happy about sustainability and space travel? And what do you think about the alien signals? Tell us now what the perfect exoplanet looks like to you.